What's up guys and gals and welcome to Weekly Indie Newcomer, the Friday series where we hang out for a little bit and play an indie game that's been picking at my brain over the course of the last couple weeks. Clockwork Empires is just that sort of game. Like I've been playing this for months now and following the development and I've been very very excited about what it's become. Now before we start off, Clockwork Empires is in development by Gaslamp Games, the company that did Dungeons of Dreadmore. And so right up front you know that this game is going to be very very funny. Dungeons of Dreadmore had some of those jokes that were just like make you belly laugh at 2 in the morning even though you knew everybody in your family was asleep so I think Clockwork Empires definitely has that sense of humor but as of right now I'm gonna lay a couple things up front in front of you Clockwork Empires is definitely early access early early access it's been in development now for about six months it went to its steam release about six months ago as I recall and I didn't play it then because I didn't feel like there was enough content since then the developers have updated it about once to twice every month and they've been very very consistent about giving you at least one content dense patch a month and so I think that's a pretty good work ethic and I think it's about time that Clockwork Empire's got a little bit of love here at the Nerd Castle I play it a lot in my own free time it does have some optimization issues, so the game will crash on you from time to time. The game seems to have issues allocating memory, and every now and again your colonists kind of like get confused with their tasks and just like don't do anything and sit down and die. These are all normal things that I would come to expect from an early access colony management sim. It's just, these are complicated games to put together and it takes a while to squish all the bugs, especially if you're still in the formatory periods, or the formative periods. There we are, that's the word, that formatory. A formatory seems like the kind of place where you would sleep, but then again you would also like form up together with like a unit or something like that. It's the formatory. I don't know, or maybe it's a place where you work on just like your form. You like work out a lot, but then you also sleep there. Either way, the game is in its formative period, and so not all of the things have been ironed out. Not all of the things have been added. And so bug squashing when you don't even have all of the features implemented takes time. So here we go, Clockwork Empires. We're going to click on New Game right now. As of right now, you can start two colonies. One of them is in a jungle, which is over on this side, and it's called New Sogwood. And then another one is that you can start a colony in New Antipodia. In case you haven't guessed by now, this game is a colony management sim in the vein of sort of like Nemoria, Dwarf Fortress, all of those sorts of games which allow you to take control of an area and kind of like watch things unfold as you wait for your colony to die horribly. This game takes it to a different level where this game is set in a Lovecraftian steampunk world. And so essentially the major threats to your colonies in this game are not going to be like random stuff that you dig out of the earth. It's not going to be random monsters that attack you. Really it's going to be things largely related to the HP Lovecraft world. And so typically people become parts of cults and then they start like worshipping dark forces and pretty soon they're summoning like Cthulhu into the world or Cthulhu into the world, destroying everybody and it just, it becomes a major major issue. So occultism is really kind Kind of like the thing that you're trying to ferret out in this game and you do that through a number of different ways largely did I just get a fur? See, every now and again I got a fur in my mouse, and then it kills one of the vectors so that I can't, like, move my mouse properly. The other one you can make is New Antipodia, which is kind of like an alpine region or an aspen forest. And they're both, they both have their own benefits and detriments. But in the interest of showing off as much gameplay as possible during the course of this video, I'm just going to choose Sawgood right now. I used to be a big fan of Antipodia, but right now I've actually swapped over and I've become a fan of Sawgood for a number of reasons. And so our loadout, 13 colonists. Three soldiers, sundry supplies as befits an expedition of this size. The area is rich in timber and minerals, and there are rumors of fish people. Jungle fowl and giant beetles are in the area. Let's ride. Alright, welcome home everybody. This is new Sogwood, which sort of denotes in one way or another that there must have been an old Sogwood around somewhere. The game's performance is a little bit low right now, so this won't be rendered in 60 frames per second, I don't think. We'll see what happens as it goes along, but as of right now, the game has a lot of performance and optimization issues. They've been putting content in, they've been working on like the engine, and so obviously the game does not agree with your hardware a lot of the time, especially not mine. Some people are able to play it like without any issues, those people are not me. Oh, we're starting out right in the middle of a fishman village. Okay, so as things crash to the ground here, let's take a look around and we'll figure out the things we need to get started. It looks like one of our guys is catching some brucka from a fish man. So we landed hot, actually. This landing zone is really, really rough on us. You'll see our soldiers running around. They should be able to handle some of these fishmen before things get too out of line. We've definitely got them outgunned for the time being. And so, now that these fish people are up and out of the way, we want to get started on maybe managing our colony a little bit. So, the first thing we want to start out with, a stockpile, which we can find down in our zones and constructions. In the stockpile menu, for whatever reason, was the first stockpile 
actually just like a big pile of stuff. Ooh, this is a really, really good map. The reason you know it's a really, really good map is if we go to, there's going to be a menu right here to flatten terrain. Look how flat the terrain is. This is very, very important. Like seriously, if you get an area that does not have flat terrain, it can take you a huge amount of time just to get the land flattened out so that you can start the game off in a way that's productive. It, it can definitely change the outset of your game. So now that we have a stockpile, you will take note that as with every other colony management sim, people are taking things to the stockpile to be organized. They don't actually pile them. They actually sort of like arrange them in rows and in little columns and in little grids. It's very, very helpful. It's nice of them because it makes it easy for us to find stuff. The next thing we need to do, let's see here. We got some giant snails running around. That's horrifically threatening. I'm not really sure what I would do if I saw a snail that big. I would probably just tuck tail and run in all honesty. That kind of big ass snail is just not meant to be dealt with. Especially if you've seen some of those snails that are on the bottom of the ocean that have like those shotgun fangs that they fire into other creatures and kill them. Ooh, it's brutal. It's metal. It's really, really metal. So anyways, let's go ahead. I'm going to forge down here. As you can tell, the performance is kind of bad in this game. It rarely runs higher than 30 frames per second. I've yet, and this is right now my rig, GTX 980. Brand new system. Built it like three weeks ago. Got like an insane amount of RAM, a really, really nice processor. Like, basically, the game is just not optimized right now. So if you are going to back the game and you're going to go into the early access, that's just something you're going to have to live with for a little while. They're focusing mostly on content right now and on engine changes to make sure that, like, the little people are doing all the things that they want to do. If you're seeing these little things pop up above their heads, that means that they're either thinking about a concept or they're talking to somebody else about it. These things can be anything from talking about the Regency back in their home country so they can talk about the various kings and queens the nobility, they'll talk about the bourgeoisie, everybody they have talks about communism, essentially they will talk about a lot of different things that can really sort of change the way that they think as an individual. As the game goes along, the developers are saying that individuals as part of your colony will develop their own personalities. As of right now, they sort of have that, but mostly it's developed around the fact that like as they witness things, like for example, everybody in our colony just witnessed battle. That's just universally negative for like everybody. And so it kind of causes their brain to decay a little bit. They lose a little bit of their mental state, which makes them more likely to fall to chaos or to fall to the supernatural or the occult. The first thing that we need, so we need wood around here. I don't think we have, well, we have a couple of logs, but I'm gonna set some of these trees up to be forested. So let's get going. We're gonna chop down some trees. I'm not really sure how much we're gonna get done in this episode. This is a game that's meant to be played over the course of like 20 to 25 hours. Like you will get a lot of time out of your colony as you sort of plow through and learn how to build everything and kind of get all of your different industries in play. If you wanted to take a look as to what is able to be built right now, this is all of the various machinery that you can build that has various functions for your society. These are all the buildings in the game right now. There's carpentries, there's kitchens, there's ceramics, there's refineries, there's metalworks, there's houses for all three classes because you have both lower class, bourgeois people, and then you also have the nobility that come to live here and you have to look after their needs separately. And so they will each become sort of jaded or happy depending on how you treat each group. There's going to be kind of this inner dynamic class warfare going on as you get further into the game as they develop it. It's not in right now, so they don't go to war with each other based on their class. But at the moment you do have to look after the needs of each class based on what they want. So higher class people like higher class food, higher class houses, etc. So on and so forth. We've got the arsenal where you can make various boomsticks and daca. The brewery where you can make your beer because obviously you can't have a civilized society without some kind of liquor. Chemist shop. We've got the chapel. The chapel is the place where they'll hear sermons and it'll keep them from going into the occult. So you can assign various people to be like preachers and things like that. It'll keep them essentially just preaching all around the clock to keep people from falling to chaos, although some of them still will. Textile workshops so that you can make yourself cloth and all that good stuff. Laboratories. Haven't played with that one yet. That's new. That's from one of the, not the latest patch, but it's from the patch before last, and I haven't really got a chance to play with it yet. And the mine is from the patch that went out two or three days ago. And so there it is. These are all the buildings. Every single building has its own set of like stuff you can build if you wanted to sort down here. Essentially all that you have to do is jump on in and you click on like the carpentry workshop for example. Once you click on the carpentry workshop it will open up and show you all the various things that you can only make for the carpentry workshop. Chemist shop, exact same thing. So everything is very, very organized right now in such a way that it's easy to find the stuff that you want, which is a good thing because in these colony management sims, sometimes it's very, very easy to get lost in a lot of the things that are hiding below the surface. So how are our Woodstocks going right now? Mmm, Woodstocks. Woodstocks reminds me there's a place up in Davis in California called Woodstocks Pizza where they'll have like a dollar, they have a dollar pint night where you can go and you can get micro brews for a dollar. Did he just throw a grenade at us? So the fish man threw a grenade at us, and now he's doing his best to pistol whip our soldier. He threw another one. Unfortunately, our soldiers are not running to, like, aid each other or assist each other. 
So unfortunately, yeah, this lady is unaware right here, which is going to become a problem in the long run. Luckily, they seem to have gotten the fish man to retreat, and now he's dead, but he's wounded from what I understand. Yeah, he's a, he has a wound that is terrible, and the pain is surely lingering. Unfortunate. You can click on any character, and it'll have their various traits. So, he used to be a criminal. He is in the military now, and he's also an organized human being. And so, later on, these are going to affect things. As of right now, only the more obvious ones affect stuff. Let's get a house built. How about that? Cut ourselves some wood. So, giggity, we should probably build ourselves a house so that we can put it to good use. Let's go with a lower class house right now. We just need a bunkhouse for people to live in, some place for them all to sleep. And so I'll throw it right there. That seems good. I like it. And so it's not going to take too long to build. We might actually have a problem getting stuff done in the earlier game. Let's see here. We've got idle work crews. If you wanted to organize your people, you go to the work crews menu up here. And everybody, this game kind of uses an interesting system for how it organizes labor. So basically you have taskmasters or overseers who are like middle class. And they make sure all the lower class people are working. Now you can reorganize these. But the jobs that people do are going to be largely dependent on what they are assigned to. So for example, if you take Mr. Strap's discipline fans and you assign them to the kitchen that's pretty much all that they're going to do they're going to work in the kitchen a lot of the time and then if they have any extra free time they'll get to work doing other stuff that their work group is enabled to do down here in the bottom this system is kind of interesting and i've never seen a game use this system before i'm not saying that no game has ever used it before because obviously my ignorance knows no bounds when it comes to like the vast selection i suppose of like colony management sims however what i will say is that i've never personally seen this system before and it's good for organizing things it makes your life a little bit easier when you're trying to make stuff work the way that you want it to inside this bunkhouse the basic stuff that we want to get riding right now we more than likely probably just want to go with some beds or something yeah, let me flip the beds around real fast it doesn't look like they want to flip Unfortunate. That's okay, though. We'll set some beds up. They take one cloth, and they take one lumber, neither of which we really have very many of. But setting up a couple cots right now will save us a bit of trouble later on, and it'll give people places to sleep whenever they decide to clunk out for the night. They clunk when they hit the floor. They're not the brightest individuals. Very, very hollow heads. So when they hit the ground, clunk. That's what you get out. On this side, he's chasing a fish man off into the darkness and murdering him with a bayonet, or she is anyways. So our Bonnie Lasso slaughter... Or our Bonnie Lass of Bullets. There we go. This guy's got himself a beat stick. Hopefully our military will jump in on that and handle it. Although I think some of our guys are wounded right now. And so it'll kind of depend what he can get done here. We have been under a lot of attack lately. That's one of the downsides to new Sogwood is that typically you're under attack very, very early on in your playthrough. We need to get some farms up and running. If we don't get farms up and running, we're going to starve very, very quickly. And so we're going to go to our organizational menu right here for zones. We're going to go to farms. And what we're going to try and do is we're going to put in a farming area. Probably, I don't know, probably over here by the stockpile just make our lives a little bit easier. I'm going to drop this in right here. There we go. Our first farm is up and running. And unfortunately, I need to put in a couple more. So don't drop that prompt. Don't drop that prompt just yet. Just like that da 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 don't drop that prompt. So the da 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 the prompt, don't drop any of those right now. That's going to be slightly off to the left, and that's not okay. Sometimes the zoning is a little bit weird in this game. Just be aware that on occasion, odd things will happen that will keep you from spacing your, your fields the way that you want to. It's one of the weird little issues that I've come across with the game where sometimes it just like doesn't do what I want it to, no matter what I tell it to. Like, see, I started clicking right here. You take a look at the square. I'm going to start clicking right here so that it's lined up. And in starting there, you kind of have to wait a second. And look, it offset it to the left slightly. It didn't start it in this little square right here. It takes some getting used to, and you kind of want to click like farther off to the left if you want to get it to work. There we go. Kind of like start with the boundaries. And what we want to do with these farms is we want to get these things going, growing us food. And so there's going, growing us food. There, I can say this. And so we want to go with maize plants. That's what I'm going to go. It's amazing all of the maize that we're going to grow in this colony. So there it is. As much corn as we can possibly bring along. And then, once we've got these four designated, the last thing that we're going to do is we're going to make a farm that almost exclusively grows flax so that we can make ourselves more cloth if and when we need it. However, this field doesn't need to be very big. It just needs to be kind of small. It'll work. Just like a three by whatever will probably do her I mean, I don't know why she needs to be done right now, but eh, you know what I mean, it'll do her. So I'll probably start right here, and we'll probably just make this like a little, yeah, 4x3 will be fine for flax. That should be enough for the future, at least until our colony grows a little bit bigger. The last thing that I want to do is let's clear this terrain so that we no longer have these nasty bushes all up in our crops. It doesn't matter, it's not a thing that you have to do, but just for aesthetic purposes, I like to get rid of all this stuff, it makes me happy. 
I'll probably also clear out some of these trees just to make my life a little bit easier. It won't let you cut down these coconut palms without using a clear order specifically, so you can't clear cut these because they count as a food resource, and the game, by its own nature and devices, tries to keep you from destroying food. It's just a thing that the game does. We should also probably put in a graveyard just in case people die. It is a possibility. Think of this as like the colonial period of any of like the western nations out here, like North America, South America. Settlers have this kind of alarming tendency to just like fall over dead of random diseases and this colony is no exception So there's our graveyard for the time being everyone will whistle while they work work to live live to work You know the theme here at the nerd castle and if ever they get bored with their job They know that the taskmaster is several feet away and will just look over and be like hey don't slack the graveyards right there It's a very very short drag for me to take you on over there things get dark out here things get dark that is true. So our flax plants should be ready to go pretty soon. We'll be able to make a bit more cloth with that. This field is looking a little bit lackluster. Hold on. It's it's looking like it might not be what we need here. Maybe I'll just put in a normal like, eh, like that right there. That'll do it. We'll grow a little bit more flax right there. Three plants. That's four plants. Yeah, four plants probably not going to be enough for the long term. That'll be enough right there though. So anyways, we've got that all done. The farming is very, very important. You want to do this in the early game or you will starve to death, 100%. Unless you've got yourself a particularly lovely area where you started out with a lot of food, like a very fruitful area that has a lot of forageables, you probably aren't going to make it. Probably, um, are just... Okay, so the fishmen are coming in. They like to destroy your crops, and so that's what this means down here. The game uses kind of like a tooltip system where anything that needs your attention will line up on the right-hand side over here. The right-hand side? I must be thinking about food right now. I must be hungry. The right-hand side. So anyways, property destruction crops. They came in. They like to destroy your fields, and then you've got to replant them. Obviously, this guy is really, really sad about it. That was his favorite corn plant. He is really, really upset about the fact that that corn plant was destroyed. On top of this, the next thing that we need to do is make ourselves a kitchen. I'm not going to assign work groups for right now because I don't feel like it's important until we have a kitchen up and running. However, once the kitchen is up and running, it will become important. So let's get that going. Why our kitchen will be up and running, I'm not really sure. We didn't install any legs in it, but there you go. There's your old joke about, is your refrigerator running? You better go catch it. Yeah. Alright, so let's drop this. What's going on? Hey, what's going on? Oh, I did modules. My bad. You got to build from over here. So we need a kitchen. By and large, the kitchen is probably one of the most important places you're going to build over the course of your adventures. I would leave it small because only one work group can work inside of a building. And so once it's all full up, just make several small kitchens rather than one huge one. You don't need the extra space. This game very, very much kind of wants you to build smaller buildings all over the place and eventually have like a big city made of small buildings. Once you have that, it automatically swaps your... Let's see, I'll probably put this right there since we actually have an even number of squares. We can't really make it look how we want it to, but we'll put it over there. And then what I usually spend all of my early resources that we bring over, if you take a look at our stockpile right now, you will see that we have pipes and like metal and some of these limited things that the Commonwealth has sent with us or the... There's like a, a, bureau, a bureaucracy of colonization, I think, that's in charge of everything over here. They've sent us with basic supplies, and what I typically like to do with this is I like to spend it on cooking utensils. It seems to be the most beneficial way to get your colony started in a good sense. And so I usually just put in a couple of the really, really good ovens. I use some of our starting materials to make sure that we have the best ovens in the game so that we can cook quickly, and therefore we can process our food very, very rapidly. Because if they eat raw food, you see these coconuts down here? Oh, the kitchen needs a work crew. We'll get that in a second, but there's nothing for them to work on just yet. Anyways, I need to make sure, if you want to see what you have of every resource, you just do it very, very simply under the commodities menu. Everything is listed and easy for you to find. So for each of these over here, what did we need for each of these? We needed a pipe, a plate, and a brick. And so we have in our commodities menu three, three, and six. And so that's about all we're going to be able to build over here for right now. So we're going to have to fill in the rest with stones. Unfortunately, we don't have stones, so we need to queue this up right here. The surface nodes of what are these? Rhyolite boulders. Okay. So they are rhyolitic material. I would explain what that is, but it's outside the breadth of this video. This would be like the cause for a geologic talk right here if we wanted to talk about rhyolitic boulders. But anyways, we're not going to talk about that right now. It's a weekly indie newcomer. If I was doing a let's play of this, we would definitely talk about it. Just be aware, it's a type of magma. There's rhyolitic magma, there's there's various types. There's basaltic magmas, there's lots of different types of magmas, and rhyolitic boulders result from rhyolitic magmas. So there you go. Once they chop these down, we will have the things that we need in order to make a couple more in here. You want to make five ovens so that five people can work. Maybe a few more if you're feeling particular industrious but for right now let's give them a workbench inside of here as well I don't know what the workbench does but they seem to do their job better whenever I put one in here so I usually try to at least put one in there 
And then we'll start with the stone oven. We'll put one in right meow. And we'll put another one in side by side since it'll interfere with the workbench if we put it in anywhere else. And all of these things are interactive. Like once your workers start working on this stuff, they'll have little smoke plumes and they'll sit here and you'll see them actually like putting stuff into the ovens. It's very, very cool the way that everything is animated to show the job that the individuals are doing. And so the developers have a very, very tremendous task in front of them when designing a game like this. It's kind of like designing a game like Nemoria. There's a lot of moving parts. There's a lot of logic taking place. There's a lot of random like switch logic and you know binary things happening where individuals are looking at one thing should I be doing this should I be doing this and they're having to make a decision in between the various work tasks that are in front of them now this game is kind of punctuated by immigration periods that's the big thing the game functions on this mechanic right here called prestige if you do something that benefits England or Antipodia which I think is the name of England in this one if you do something that benefits your home country you will get prestige and your colony will become more prestigious prestige can be cashed in for various bonuses so for example every now and again they will offer you stuff if you have a lot of prestige you will get bonuses to the amount of stuff that you get and so here's our first immigration period we get to choose the colonial minister has seen fit to send some immigrants to your colony do you have any preferences as to whom you would like to arrive you can say go away so if you're having food issues or you're having like real problems with your work orders or you're having problems with cultists there would be reasons for you to turn down immigrants while you get those problems under control you can say that you want one overseer this will effectively create a new work crew or you can take three of anyone you've got which just gives you three workers that you can fill out your crews with in the early game you always want to go with three of anyone you've got it is the only option you should be clicking for probably the first two weeks or so because you just want to fill out the work crews that you have and then you also want to fill out your military regiments with all of the militia you can fill them out with and you need the prestige for later on in the game there is nothing quite as good as prestige if you have like let's say you have a food shortage you can trade your prestige to have them airdrop a bunch of food in and save your colony from dying and so a lot of times what will happen here is that you will need that prestige in order to make sure that you don't get an instant game over when your colony dies because this functions just like Nomoria, just like Dwarf Fortress or any other quali like colony management game. You're trying to make this last as long as possible before everyone dies horribly of whatever happens. And believe me, they will die horribly. I've yet to have a colony that just lasted indefinitely. Usually cultists get the better part of you. That seems to be the big thing that happens is that cultists roll on in, they start having like murder sprees, you know, they build altars to Cthulhu and they start summoning dark gods and just all kinds of crazy stuff happens. You try to lynch them, but it's hard to stay ahead of the lynching curve. All right. We've got our... Okay, so let's assign a work crew. We just click inside of here. That's all we have to do. And actually, I think our best plan, let's assign work crews first. So we got a couple of people right here. I think Mr. Brown Bread's Honest Propellers, he's got a good name, so we're going to assign them to the kitchen. That's their job because he's got Brown Bread as his name. It's easy to remember. And what we want to do is want to put everybody into this group because you want to have the kitchen. You want it to be outfitted. Believe me when I say this. You really, really sincerely do. Now, we've got coconuts. What can we make out of coconuts? We can make, let's see here, out of coconuts, you don't want them to eat raw food because it makes them sad. You want to cook it. So we can make coconut curry. Unfortunately, we don't have any chilies. So we'll get started with maize, actually. We'll say that we want to keep, let's make 20 maize. And what we want to do here is we actually want to click on this. This will make it such that we always have 20 maize inside of our stockpile. And so there it is. That's been taken care of. And we want to put Mr. Brown Bread on this. That means that his work group, before doing anything else, will specifically tend to the kitchen. That's their job. So if there is construction to be done in the kitchen, they will try and build these ovens. If there's bread to be baked, they will make the bread first. This is not to say that they won't do other jobs, but they will tend to these first. And I think it's an interesting organizational tool. The developers have said the kitchen needs a work crew. We already got that. The developers have said that they're rethinking it and they may actually redesign the work group method. But honestly, for what it is, I kind of like it. I'm a very disorganized person, and so the work crews work for me. I actually like that better than doing it by hand like I would with the No More or, you know, any other game where you actually go person by person, assigning them based on their skill sets. They haven't implemented the skill sets in this game as of right now either. Like, people are assigned jobs, so if you look at what people are and you mouse over them, it will tell you that they're like an artisan or that they do this job or they do that job. But as of right now, they don't get any, like, miners. Like, they don't get any, I suppose, detract. They don't get any minuses or bonuses from doing like the job that they want as far as I know from playing the game like 25 hours it seems like everybody does every job perfectly fine and as long as you build them a house that they're happy to be in they shouldn't have any problems the next thing we need is a middle class house and so let's make a middle class house this is gonna be for our overseers and this is very very important like you want to build this I noticed when I was streaming this that a lot of the time our overseers tended to become cultists before everybody else that's because they refuse to sleep in the low quality housing or they get a very very large 
percentage minus to their happiness when they sleep in peasant housing. They want to sleep in middle class housing because they're middle class. Just think of all your people as being very, very class conscious. What's this? A fish people attack. The fish people have seen fit to send three raiders to attack the colony. What shall we do? Chap of the gills, five rounds rapid. Make lines, rings be ready. Chap with the gills. I like it. I, I like that old, you know how like old sergeants in old movies from like the 18, they'll have movies from like the 1950s or 1940s that will have like the old red coat regiments from the, you know, 1700s and 1800s. They always have that guy who's like, make ready, fix mayonnaise, hold steady now lads. Like every single time that guy is there and I enjoy his presence. He usually has like a handlebar mustache that runs up. It turns into sideburns. Like, almost like in a Morgan Spurlocky kind of way. Actually, I think Morgan Spurlock just has, like, handlebars. His don't turn into sideburns. I'm gonna have this go a little bit longer so you guys can see how the game goes. I'd rather do, like, 30, 35 minutes so that we can get started here. I feel like we've given you a pretty good synopsis of the... Ooh, that's unfortunate. Talk about bad luck. Okay. So, a bandit raid. Four bandits have raided your colony demanding spoils. How shall you respond? They can take what they want. We can't fight that many bandits right now. You have two choices. You can either fight them or you can allow them to take what they want. And since we're being simultaneously attacked by fishmen, letting them take what they want is the better plan for right now. It will make us a tad safer. You can, however, betray them. When the bandits come into your colony, if we fend it off the fishmen, we can actually betray them and attack them, even though we said we weren't going to. So be aware that is an option. You can't be as skeevy as you want. And there's no penalty for it. It's perfectly fine. That's the word that I've been looking for this entire episode. I've been like plus and minuses the entire time and I've wanted the word penalty. I don't know why, but the word penalty has just not been there for me. Oh wow, they actually came in in force. Yeah, it's a good thing we didn't fight these guys. It wouldn't have worked out well for us. It probably would have stung. However, I will attack this individual. Are we fighting them right now? Oh wow, they're fighting all of them at the moment. Okay. That guy's got a cutlass, which means he's definitely going to lose a fight with a gun. And has already lost said fight. Keep shooting. Keep shooting. It's okay. I give you all the kill order. Murder. Go forth and murder. They're stealing our stuff. That guy's been shot in the throat, so he's falling over, gasping, and hoping he can get some air. That guy's trying to steal our lovely bunch of coconuts. Dweedly D. Standing out beside the road. Actually, they're standing out beside the stockpile. Okay, so we survived the bandits. That's going to give us a supply of guns. However, we're almost out of bullets. If you take a look at our stockpile, yeah, we're actually out of bullets right now. That's not good. That's really, really bad. So hopefully the Colonial Ministry will contact us in a little bit and ask us what we want. And when they ask us that question, we shall say firmly, Sir, we would very much like to have some more guns. Some more guns, gats, and general item-propelling tubes would be great. The more language we can propel at our enemies. Seriously, we're out here like fire. We're melting down the silverware to fight with bandits at this point. There's actually little ammo crates. I don't know. Maybe they didn't bring them back over. No, we're out of ammo, actually. We're totally out of ammo. Only officers can use sabers, so don't think of swords as being good. There's different guns. There's a blunderbuss. There's a Gisele rifle. Actually, you should read the descriptions of some of these because they're funny. Like, for example, for the Gisele rifle, it says that you can actually aim it, and therefore it is a really, really dishonorable weapon because it actually you can aim it at officers and things like that. It's the weapon of a coward because it's not, it's not inaccurate, which is kind of like a funny way of thinking about things, but that's actually how they thought about things back in the colonial period. Did you know that during the colonial period, this was in a Ken Burns documentary that I watched, there's an unnamed sniper who was responsible in the war for independence here in the United States. There was a sniper at one of the battles who's responsible for killing like several high ranking members of the general hood. In one battle, he just like sniped them throughout the battle. He's responsible for like three or four kills and they know it was the same guy, but nobody knows what his name was and they think that it was him that turned the tide of the entire revolutionary war and nobody knows what his name was. Crazy, crazy. One guy, he killed off like a lot of the senior like leadership for the Redcoats when they were invading in one battle. And it's just like, it's wild that nobody knows his name. Crazy. That he like affected things like that. Eh, just things to think about. Weird things to think about. We've got Bushels of Maze right now, which is fantastic. Hopefully they don't get lost. They're eating it actually right now. They will resort to cannibalism if you don't have enough food. Like they will start killing each other and butchering and eating each other. It gets real. Whoa, that is a huge lizard. Holy shit, that's a big lizard. A land dragon? Oh my god. That thing is horrifying. It's like a big gecko. I don't know. We could hunt the giant snail too. Our flax plants look like they're coming in nicely. Our first harvest looks like... Oh, he's eating the corpses. Oh, wow. That's super metal. Although it saves me from having to take the time to bury him. So thanks a lot, man. I'm not going to shoot you now. I appreciate your contribution to our society. Yep, there he is right there. He starts with the ass. Hey, you left some behind. That is going to be long pork. Long pork is human. It's man. Soylent green. Please don't stock the long pork. People will eat it, and they actually become, like, a little bit crazy about it. 
Oh, man. Yeah, they'll eat the long pork because they prefer meat over everything else. We have food right now. I don't know why. Okay, so supply drop. We're going to take the guns because we have no means to defend ourselves right now. We can also call in a favor, but because we have no prestige, I'm going to call in. We can only have extra criminals sent out. So think of this as like a penal colony, too. We can have, like, criminals sent out. And out they go. The criminals can be part of the military or they can be part of... Let's see here. Yeah, one of them was a military guy, so it can be... They can actually be assigned to the military as a punishment instead of going to prison. But yeah, the game is called Clockwork Empires. If you enjoy what you've seen so far, the game has a lot of stuff going on for it. Like, seriously, this is the tip of the iceberg. I am going to be LPing this game someday when it comes closer to completion. But for right now, I feel like the game is actually in a state where you can play it for a little while. You can have a good time. You can definitely get, like, 20 hours out of it right now. 25 hours out of it. So check it out on Steam. I've got the link down below. The game is a lot of fun. Be aware that there are a lot of bugs. If I was going to go into pros and cons right now, it's a little early in the early access to talk about pros and cons. But on the pros end, the game has an amazing sense of humor. It's being developed by a studio that knows how to make a good game and already has a solid indie title behind them, namely Jun Dungeons of Dreadmore. This is far more complicated than anything they've done before as a studio, but they're doing a really good job with it. Its initial release was very, very rocky, but every single patch has made the game just light years better. And so every time the game gets patched, I come back in and I do another playthrough and I just kind of like enjoy things with it. I've streamed it, I've played it, I've thought about doing series on it. I love the graphics, I love the way things are presented. If I was going to do cons to this game right now, performance is bad. Performance needs a patch in order to make things function a little bit better. In general, the AI sometimes gets confused, so your random little colonists will end up standing in corners sometimes, just like going crazy and doing nothing because they can't find a way to their job. There are all of those hiccups and bugs that you would find in any other colony game are present here in the early access, but they are being worked out. For example, in the latest patches, I have noticed that my guys get stuck a lot less. So it feels like they've redone the AI. They've rebuilt the UI a couple times now to make it better. They are listening to feedback on the forums. So a lot of the cons will become pros as the developers work on them. The game is a long ways from a release right now. It's still got a lot of things to be implemented, a lot of things to be worked on. And so what you're gambling on right now in this early access period is that you're getting a game that has a strong sense of self, a strong sense of humor, a very, very good building mechanic. I like the work order system. I like the way the work groups work. I like the way that the game flows. It feels like it has structure. And on the cons end, the game does have bugs. It will be crashing. Save games are a little bit iffy right now. Sometimes they work. Sometimes they don't. So I'm just trying to be transparent with you right now on what you're getting into if you choose to play the game. By and large, I would give it a recommendation if you're into these sorts of games. If you've tapped out out, you know, Nomoria, and you've tapped out a lot of those games, you might want to give this one a look and just purchase it to keep an eye on it as you're playing, or as it updates. I'm sorry, I got the wrong word mixed in right there. If you don't have a stomach for, like, crashes and bugs and other random problems, I just keep an eye on it, because I have a good feeling about this game in the future. I'm willing to put my stamp of approval on it just I, the, just from the way it's being developed. I mean, the two patches a month have been doing amazing for the game. Sometimes you only get one, but if you only get one patch, it tends to be like a content patch where you get a bunch of new buildings and stuff to play with. So I'll put my stamp of approval on the game right now. It does have a lot of issues, but if you're into early access games, you can do a lot worse than Clockwork Empires. My name is Splattercat. Thank you for joining me here in Weekly Indie Newcomer. I look forward to seeing you all in next week's episode. Every Friday I do this. If you're new to the Nerd Castle or if this is your first video here with me as Splattercat, I do this every Friday. I play a game for like 30 minutes and we just talk about it and we do a very, very light first impression slash review of just what I've observed while playing the game. A lot of indie games nowadays are early access, so a lot of times it tends to be early access titles. It can't really be avoided anymore in the indie genre, but I do talk about the ups and downs of that early access development. So, Clockwork Empires, I hope you enjoyed this episode. I will see you all later. Hi, do till next week, everybody.